Roger Stone, Ryan and Priebus planning to extort Trump at RNC. GOP establishment still scheming to steal the nomination from the populist New York frontrunner. And he goes over all this. He's got the internal plan that they were going to use with Cruz. So he's going to break it all down for you to the end of this hour, the next 22 minutes. I want to thank Roger Stone for joining us. Thank you for giving us this exclusive, Roger. Alex, I'm, as always, I'm delighted to be with you. It is, uh, first, let's kind of set the table. The mainstream media uh, this weekend, as we have seen, seems to be focused on the past. Point here is not one of party unity, uh, but one of recognizing that the millions of people that Trump is bringing to the Republican banner, or at least to his candidacy, more than offset the 5% who are never Trump. So the, the focus is entirely wrong, understandably, because Trump is the first political figure, really, in decades, who has been able to expand the Republican base and change the entire dynamics of the next election. And I love how he said, look, I'm a populist. I'm a conservative, but it's Republican Party, not conservative party. Plus, uh, Paul Ryan, these people are not conservative leaders. They're globalist puppets who openly say they'd rather have Hillary. He should be removed as the Speaker of the House right now for that alone. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Roger. Well, at a minimum, he should be removed as chairman of the Republican National Convention. And, uh, and hired by Hillary. He should be the head of her campaign. Well, if he cannot support the democratically uh, selected nominee of his party, he should step down. But the point here, I think, is that instead of focusing on quote-unquote, party unity, Trump yesterday said correctly, the party may not be unified. Let me be clear. This movement and Trump's candidacy is much bigger than the Republican Party. That is the point that they missed. Now, Alex, we only lost the last presidential election by 700,000 votes distributed in five states. If you went to Colorado, Iowa, Florida, Michigan, Nevada, New Jersey, Ohio, Virginia, Wisconsin, and Pennsylvania. There are at least one million people who are unregistered but meet the profile of Trump supporters. Politics is about addition, not subtraction. I mean, I had to laugh this weekend because, as you've seen, uh, Bush 41, Bush 43, say they won't support the nominee. Thank God. The mainstream press thinks this is a negative. This is a positive. George W. Bush destroyed our economy and sent American men and women to fight and die in a war where we had no vital national interest. He is a disgraced foreign president. And bare minimum, bare minimum covered up the Saudi Arabian role. At a minimum. So the idea that you can't win without the support of George W. Bush or his father, uh, who is a, another uh, criminal, um, is it's a false narrative. Then this is even more laughable. Jeb Bush comes out and says he can't support Trump because Trump doesn't have the character to be president. Let me get this straight. Jeb Bush who was a drug dealer in boarding school and college and his early years in Houston and Miami. Jeb Bush, who defrauded a Florida SNL out of $4 million paid for by the taxpayers. Jeb Bush, who lined his pockets in return for official acts he took as governor of Florida. He is saying Donald Trump doesn't have the... Uh, <laughs> Integrity to be president. Yeah, a guy that never got above five points or whatever. I mean, it, it just shows the delusion. It's like we live in North Korea or something with them propping these people up and the arrogance of these folks. So, so this is where we are now. I want to get now into you know. Whoa. Now let's get into now let's get into the big meeting that's coming up. Paul Ryan is posturing, uh, making his support for Donald Trump conditional uh, on a set of demands. Those demands. I uh, need to be now, seen. Now, 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 stop for a because the siren's in the background. Roger Stone, this is a big deal. I mean, you just dropped such bombshells. I want folks to listen carefully. You have this from inside the RNC. Uh, you know, tell folks, kind of walk through what you can repeat to the audience that you told me last night of the magnitude of their arrogance and that they still think they're going to, bare minimum, rob the money of everybody that donates to Trump 
uh, and, and scuttle this for Hillary. I mean, you know, phrase this as you did last night to me, please. Certainly shall. First of all, it's important to understand the history. RNC Chairman Reince Priebus uh, is often publicly identified with Romney or with uh, his governor uh, uh, in, uh, uh, in Wisconsin, Walker. But in truth, Reince Priebus is a Ryan man. That's his birthright in politics, Paul Ryan. Don't forget that as we move forward. So uh, in essence, what Walker is going to, pardon me, what uh, Ryan is going to demand of Trump is control of the Republican National Committee would remain in the hands of Priebus uh, and his cohorts. They would also demand that the Trump campaign use the data vault, which was built and is partially owned by Karl Rove, uh, for all of their outgoing voter contact. We happen to know that this flaw, this system is flawed, it's dirty. Uh, it was proven to be ineffective in the 2012 campaign. They've essentially just taken the Romney data program, which crashed on election day, and recycled it as a new product. It's still flawed. Beyond that, they want to demand that the individual Republican state chairman have control and run the Trump campaigns in the individual states. Now, this struggle is mostly about money. It's about the favored vendors for Reince Priebus uh, getting multi-millions of dollars worth of business from the Trump campaign and from the 2016 effort. Here's what Reince Priebus doesn't understand. He's about to meet, he and Paul Ryan are about to meet the toughest negotiator probably alive today. Speaking as someone who over the last 30 years has negotiated multiple compensation agreements with Donald Trump, I can just tell you, he's tough, he's clear, he's blunt, and he understands that the movement that he is leading is far bigger than the Republican Party. He will not be blackmailed. He will call for Ryan to step down as speaker, uh, pardon me, as convention chairman. There is, as I reported here on InfoWars last week, a backbench revolt among individual liberty-minded congressmen who are furious with Ryan. And Sarah Palin is pledging to go after Ryan in his reelection. What a wonderful lady. This is, this is America taking its country back. This is so exciting. And again, it shows their arrogance that, that they think they can try to steal it, even though it already backfired on them when they tried to publicly sell it. If Paul Ryan said he'd rather have Hillary, and so has the leader of the Senate, Mitch McConnell, on record, then they have no place at the head of the RNC. They have no place as the speaker, no place as the Senate majority leader. I say get on the offense now, and I understand Trump's giving them a chance to back off, and they need to just remove themselves. Because, look, they'll steal the money, and then they'll scuttle the campaign and give it to Hillary. That's their stinking plan. They've admitted it. These little rat bastards have admitted it. Mr. Stone, am I wrong? No, you're absolutely right. And Alex, this is the insidious, insidious hand of Karl Rove. Let's remember, Rove has a proprietary interest in the data trust uh, 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 data bank. Rove has tight relationships with many of these Republican state chairmen. So the fix is in if Ryan and Priebus get their way. Now, I also believe that the RNC has a $1 million hard bank debt that the Trump campaign is unaware of. I also think that there are accounting tricks being used at the RNC to make their fundraising totals look more impressive than they are, taking compliance money and legal money and recount money and essentially double counting it to make the bank balances look higher. So uh, this is just my personal view. I would urge uh, Donald Trump and his people to do an audit of the Republican National Convention Committee uh, as soon as uh, he takes control. And I would make no deal to give away That's right. what has been since the 1860s, the right of the Republican national nominee to control the party in, a, in an election year. So uh, really the headline here is for InfoWars.com. Paul wrote a very good article, uh, you know, conferring with us last night. But I mean, really it's, a bunch of neocons or a bunch of uh, rhinos are trying to hijack the party and derail the whole process, claiming it's their rules. 
trying to openly steal the money, trying to take over the process, and try to take control of the party away from the presumptive uh, nominee even after they're nominated. This is just so sensational. But in the age of the TPP secretly being ratified and we're under world government, and in the age of the Pope calling for world government, and everyone's saying Donald Trump's so evil because he says globalism is destroying us, isn't this emblematic of these, of these bureaucrats and these politicians because they're in control of the system, believing they own it and control it, and then they come out and openly say it's all theirs? I mean, I'm wondering if they realize how this has backfired. They already tried to sell that there's no popular election. One man, one vote doesn't exist in the primary. Silly kids, that never happened, even though you have all the public interest and the money and election laws and uh, you know uh, false advertising and the rest of it. But now they just think they can just take it again and take over the party, uh, it just really shows how delusional these people are. You were there when they tried to steal it from Reagan and force the compromise. You were there throughout this. Have you ever seen such levels of brazen uh, megalomania in your view, Roger Stone? Let me put it you this way, Alex. I have never seen a situation in which a Republican speaker tried to blackmail the Republican nominee for president. This is extortion. Uh, and all he has, Paul Ryan, has to trade, uh, of course, is his endorsement, which he has withheld to create this leverage. Let me move on, because there's another important development this weekend. You, uh, I'm sure, noticed that Donald Trump engaged Hillary Clinton on the questions of her husband's epic abuse of women and her role in covering up that scandal. And let's just say it, you don't like to brag, but you've been advising Trump for a year and a half. When, uh, this is the game plan. You told me a few weeks ago, watch, get ready. He's going to go after her on this, and he, and he did. Which shows oh, he's got the bona fides to go toe-to-toe. -to -toe. He's, he's for real, folks. This is what we've always needed is somebody to not play patty cake. Continue, Roger. Well, look, I, I, Donald Trump is his own man, and he decides what he says, but I, I think it is very clear that he has read my book, The Clinton's War on Women, as have hundreds of thousands of other Americans. So when New York Magazine yesterday reported that Trump made this claim without foundation, no, there's a lot of foundation. Read the well, book. Well, we're going to go over it in the books available at InfoWarsStore.com, but let me just add, I see articles every day saying Donald Trump claimed that the Saudis had a role in 9-11 that was a cover-up with no proof, and they don't even mention the 28 pages. So, you know, this is like Gibbs saying there's no drone program six years after the program's public. Sorry, go ahead. Well, but it's very important to understand here what the strategy is, because the Clintonites hope that they can suppress this story as they did in the 80s. Unfortunately for them, that was the pre-internet age. So they have put enormous pressure on CNN, on Fox, on MSNBC, on the networks, trying to claim, oh, this has all been discredited. No, no, you, they admit on MSNBC and CNN, as you know, they cut people's mics when they mention this. Yeah, it's extraordinary, but it won't work, and I'll tell you why. Because you cannot gag the nominee of the Republican Party. Can't do it. You cannot gag Donald Trump, and he gets it. Now, her entire campaign strategy is based on winning a disproportionate number uh, of votes from women. Uh, and uh, Media Matters for America, the, tr the Clinton apologists, financed by Soros, uh, but directed by Hillary, um, seek to pressure and discredit anyone who raises this question. This is really simple, though. Let Juanita Broderick speak. Let Paula Jones speak. Let my friend Kathleen Willey speak. Hear them out. Let them tell you exactly what happened to them at the hands of Bill and then at the hands of Hillary. Then Hillary can deny it if she wishes. That's right. And the American people can decide who's telling the truth. But for her to say, for Hillary to say that young college women who are sexually assaulted at school deserve to be believed, but these women do not deserve to be believed, is outrageous. Well, now, the truth is they're an organized crime syndicate. They've settled cases. We know they're doing it. And thank God you wrote the book to expose it all. Other facets. I mean, I love the fact that Trump's so strong. I love the fact he's not backing down. I love his foreign policy speech. Uh, so much good stuff is happening. Uh, what are other pitfalls? What are other attacks? What else is on the radar? Uh, I mean, bottom line, I guess we get the word out about the Clintons and their and their abuse of women. We, we get the word out about what Paul Ryan and, and Priebus, uh, these little arrogant creatures, are doing. Uh, we expose the fact that... Uh, 
that 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 you know the whole world trying to gang up on us and tell us what to do. What else is on the radar, Roger Stone? Well, there was one other very significant development uh, this weekend in which Donald Trump referred to the Clinton Foundation as a scam. So you you're seeing the the elementary uh, messages of Donald Trump's campaign. He has vowed to go after Hillary, hammer and tong. He understands her epic abuse of women. He understands the disaster that is her tenure as Secretary of State. And he understands the, the largest single money laundering operation in US history, which is the Clinton Foundation. The mainstream media is trying desperately not to cover these stories as, as if they don't exist. Terrific piece on Breitbart this week about how subsequent developments regarding the Clinton Foundation uh, got no mainstream media coverage. Sure. So uh, we see the game they are going to try to play. They're going to try to make these issues untouchable. This worked for them in the 80s. It is not going to work for them in 2016. Well, even when I talk to Democrats and people I know, some of them which are prominent here in Austin, they go, no, we can see Trump winning now. We can see it in Hillary's damaged goods. And then the FBI is set to talk to her this week. I mean, even if they don't go after her, it's just this whole backdrop uh, that it, it's as if she's crawling, you know, towards her own grave while trying to crawl away from it at the same time. She wants more power to protect herself uh, into the future. She should just hope for a pardon uh, out of Obama. How was Trump when you met with him in New York? He seems to be uh, energized when I see him out on the campaign trail. Uh, I mean, this whole thing just has the smell of destiny. Well, Alex, as you know, uh, any conversation I, I have with uh, Donald is proprietary, and I would never reveal what we talked about. Sure, but I'm asking overall, how's he doing? But, but in terms of his mood, he's excited, he's pumped up, he's super confident about his ability to win. He is, um, he reiterates again uh, in everything he does that he is his own man. He's not going to be controlled by Wall Street. He's not going to be controlled by K Street. Uh, he is going to do this his way. And in all honesty, doing it his way has worked extraordinarily well so far. He is bigger than the Republican Party. He's absolutely right. It's not about whether the party is unified, it's about whether the party can attract several million new people. And that's beautiful, and that's why they're so scared of him. And, and Democrats out there, if you want prosperity, folks, just bring somebody in who doesn't dislike America and have it out for the West. These globalists in both parties are setting up a world government. They want to parlay American interest into that for themselves and get themselves seats at the new table. It's not their country to sell out. It's not their election to steal. It's not, it's not their government. Even if Paul Ryan and, and, and Hillary Clinton and all these people think it, we're watching the death of these individuals. They claim the death of the party. The party died a long time ago. It's rising like a phoenix again because of Donald Trump. This is destiny. Uh, you, you, you said they, the, they tried the mafia thing on him. They've tried that. It didn't go anywhere. What are other attacks you expect now against Donald J. Trump? Well, you also saw this uh, fraudulent lawsuit filed uh, in Texas where a non-existent woman claiming to be her own uh, attorney, uh, accused Trump falsely uh, of, uh, of abusing her in the company of Jeffrey Epstein, the convicted pedophile, who ironically is a running buddy of Bill Clinton and whose top people were... Uh, and, who's, and who uh, you wrote about in your book and who tr you told me privately Trump was getting ready to go after him with, so they just threw it back on him. Yeah, so uh, the, the good news, of course, is that a judge has now dismissed this lawsuit. It's fraudulent. This was an attempt Total to, to try to uh, neutralize Trump on the issue that they realize is a killer for the, the Clintons themselves. What was Bill Clinton doing on pedophile island for these private parties? And what did Hillary think he was doing? Yeah, not there? Paradise Island, but Pedo Island. Wow, yep. incredible. Roger Stone, amazing. Thank you. I know you're a really busy man for giving the audience such exclusives, but you're, you're a great patriot. Been exposed to the New World Order for more than 16, 17 years, uh, and, and, and decades before that working inside politics. Uh, I really feel history happening here. We should all pray for Donald Trump and uh, pray for this country and the world. Thank you so much, sir. StoneZone.com. Well, I'm now hoping that the Priebus Ryan plan, having been exposed here at InfoWars, uh, will be much harder for them to pull off. They're going into a negotiation 
with the toughest son of, the gun, son of a gun that I have ever met. So now we're going to continue to attack him uh, and hopefully get the grassroots behind it. So, Roger, what do we do and how does this play out? Well, first of all, no one extorts Donald Trump. Uh, so that's not going to work. Uh, and I think Ryan may misunderstand the value of his endorsement. Trump got nominated without any endorsements other than the great patriot Jeff Sessions. Uh, it is, uh, he is not the candidate of endorsements. Uh, and I continue to argue that the support of the Romneys and the Bushes is not a positive, it's a negative. Yeah, he should come out and say that, not just say, hey, I don't need the party leadership. You know, the party's the people. That's great he's saying that. Say, hey, I'm glad I don't have you people that sold us out. You're the failures. You're the losers. Sorry, go ahead. Uh, but I can also report that in a closed-door meeting of the Republican Lawyers Association last night, uh, oh, yeah. last, there was a presentation by Don McGahn, uh, the lawyer who represents Donald Trump, a very able man, very solid guy, very positive, upbeat presentation about how the campaign is gearing up to raise the money necessary uh, to fund a general election. After Mr. McGahn left, however, the entire meeting focused on a discussion of how to stop Donald Trump in the Rules Committee. Now, uh, the details, all of the details of this closed door meeting, will be up on Infowars.com tomorrow with a full report, because fortunately, I had a spy in the room. Just like you did at the Koch brothers meeting, incredible. But just finishing up, when do these negotiations happen? When, when will we know uh, whether they're going to be successful stealing uh, the, the, the war chest? Uh, Donald Trump uh, is going to be meeting with uh, Speaker Ryan and Chairman Priebus uh, on Thursday in Washington, D.C., uh, and we'll see how this gets worked out. But anyone who thinks you can hold up Donald Trump is a fool. Uh, he is uh, bigger than the Republican Party. He's the only one with the potential to expand the Republican Party. And Alex, this final thought, those congressmen and those senators who are fleeing Trump today are the same people who will be desperate to get on the, pro the platform with him this October. Mark my word.